What's going on, everyone? It looks like the Lakers are not going to be able to acquire Kyrie Irving, at least for now. Who knows what happens at the trade deadline? Who knows what happens next season? Uh, but if all works out for the Nets, then it's very likely the Kyrie Irving situation is dead as far as the Lakers go, at least going into the season, training camp. And I imagine that they do start with Kyrie. Uh, we're seeing Kyrie and KD kind of working together and all that stuff. So the, the possibility of Kyrie going to the Lakers is kind of non-existent at this point. Um, but a big thing going around is many people are wondering, did the Lakers waste their time? You know, did the weight Lakers make a mistake waiting around for Kyrie Irving, which could have always been a pipe dream, right? Were they ever really going to acquire Kyrie Irving? Now, you may think so, you may think not. However you feel about it, it's not necessarily what this is about. It's more so of just, like, did the Lakers waste their time waiting around for Kyrie Irving? And why didn't the Lakers go all in with Kyrie when they had an opportunity? Well, first off, all the reports have been very inconsistent from the very beginning. So who knows how realistic Kyrie Irving truly was to acquire. You know, there were the talks of them taking Joe Harris, giving up both first, and the deal would have gotten done. But we don't know that for certain, right? The, the talk was always Kevin Durant, what is going to happen with Kevin Durant, and that they didn't want to trade Kyrie, tell Kevin Durant. Also, the Lakers, they didn't have the commitment from LeBron at that point. And I know many people, including myself, feel like LeBron wasn't going anywhere, right? He wasn't leaving. So why not do the deal? You know you're going to get LeBron. But there is the risk and concern, right? Let's say you trade everything and you go get Kyrie Irving. You have him for the year. LeBron, say he leaves. And now Kyrie leaves. And now you're in just a terrible situation because now you're a rebuilding team and you don't have any assets to rebuild. Like, yeah, you could trade Anthony Davis and get some back, but at that point, you're desperate. Teams aren't going to give you the farm for a guy like Anthony Davis. So that I understand. I don't really hold that against the Lakers. And again, we don't know how certain it was that the Lakers would have been able to acquire Kyrie Irving. But when it comes to the Lakers waiting for Kyrie, and if it was a mistake, or if the Lakers wasted time, they didn't. Think about it. I mean, seriously. Kyrie Irving, he's a guy that's good enough that you wait around for. Also, what else was there that isn't there now? What trade is out there that the Lakers can't still do? The Buddy Hill to Miles Turner deal is still on the table. That deal didn't go anywhere. That deal's been there from the beginning, right? And so it's not like the Lakers can't go do that deal. Now, will they give up both first for that? Lakers don't want to. Pacers are kind of strong arming. And the Lakers, you know, are... are very likely not going to have to give up both first for these guys. Because Miles Turner, look, if you're the Pacers, would you rather get a first round pick? Uh, you know, I could see the Lakers giving up one of the unprotected firsts, maybe a throw in a couple seconds or something along those lines, or a pick swap, something like that to kind of keep the Pacers happy. If you're the Pacers, you might as well, one, move off of Buddy Hill's contract, and two, get something for Miles Turner. Miles Turner likely isn't staying. You know, he's going to test free agency. And if you're the Lakers, if you can get a guy like Miles Turner, Buddy Hill, this is the best option next to Kyrie Irving, at least in my opinion. You get the size, you get the shooting, you get the floor spacing, you go back to, in many ways, the 2020 uh, Lakers that won a championship, though they're more athletic. Uh, I don't know if they're a lock as far as like a contender goes, but I think they're closer by miles than they are currently and also miles turner provides that insurance for anthony davis because you know anthony davis very likely is going to miss probably 20 plus games this season so having a guy in miles turner who can play the power forward or center position i think is huge that would really be beneficial for the lakers and uh you know block shots uh play both positions same thing with Anthony Davis. Buddy Hill gives you that lights out shooter. I know a lot of people want Buddy Hill to start. I really don't think he starts for the Lakers. I think if you get Buddy Hill to Miles Turner, I think you have Buddy Hill as like that guy off the bench and you're starting LeBron at your point guard position. You know, maybe you start him at small forward, but really is your point guard position. And then next to LeBron, uh, Turner, and Anthony Davis, you're starting your two best shooter defenders. Not shooter or defender. I'm talking about like, who is the most consistent, even if they're not like 40% three-point shooters, who are the best, like, you know, say they're 36% from three or 35% from three, but they are great lockdown defenders. That's what you're going with. Those are the guys you're going to start with because you will be great defensively. And you need to make up for the lack of defense that LeBron has, though LeBron can play defense in moments if he needs to, but you don't want him having a guard 
you know, the best guys. You want him to guard the guy that's standing in the corner and have the other guys do the dirty work to, to kind of get the most out of LeBron, especially at this age, at this stage of his career. But I do think this is the best deal. But again, it's still a deal that's on the table. You don't have to worry about this going anywhere. And this is something I've always tried to hit home on is that, look, wait for Kyrie. You have nothing to lose by waiting for Kyrie. No one's knocking on the door, you know, rushing to the line to try to go get Miles Turner and Buddy Heald. And it's not that they're not great talents. It's just, why would I give up assets for a guy that might leave me? All of the good teams, for the most part, have a legit center. You know, and Heald, outside of shooting, he doesn't really provide anything. And he's got, you know, 40 years left. Uh, for sorry, 40, 40 million left uh, between the next two years. So that's a big thing too, you know? Um, and, you know, the Utah deal, right? You got Utah, you got the Knicks deal, things like that. They're not, they haven't gone anywhere. Again, they're still there. And these deals were predicated on Donovan Mitchell being traded. So these deals might not even be on the table right, currently, right? Because Jazz, they want to trade Donovan Mitchell but they don't want to gut the team and full-on rebuild if they keep Donovan Mitchell. And the Knicks, they don't want to do anything until they go and get Donovan Mitchell. So the Knicks deal, which personally I think is a terrible deal and the Lakers need to stay as far away from the Knicks deal as possible. And it's not that the, you know Randall isn't a good player or Fournier or Rose or whoever they end up getting. I wouldn't mind like a deal if they could work out like a minor deal for like a Cam Reddish, which I do think the Lakers will get like, will do some minor deals. I think the Lakers get a trade done at some point. Um, but I just, I outside of that, it's just the long-term salary, the, the lack of flexibility, stuff like that. And those guys, I don't think move the needle the way that the Pacers deal does. Jazz, Jazz have some very interesting pieces. And if you can get the right pieces, so if you could get like Bogdanovich and Patrick Beverly, then you'd still have the same cap flexibility. So that's really good because they're both expiring free agents. So if you can get something like that done, then you, you upgrade the roster and you keep the cap flexibility. But I still think the Turner and Heel deal are just better. Um, but you, you basically completely take yourself out of Kyrie Irving coming the following season. But at this point, do you wait around again? I don't think so. If you're the Lakers, I think you got to do what you can now to upgrade and put yourself in the best position possible. And I think that those deals do that. Although Utah might be a nice sort of supplement. And you probably don't have to give up both firsts um, you know, in, in this deal. But who knows? Um, again, these deals haven't gone anywhere. They were still on the table. The Lakers lost nothing by waiting for Kyrie Irving. You know, if like Buddy Hill and Miles Turner were traded elsewhere, then... I could understand the argument. Yeah, the Lakers, they messed up. They shouldn't have waited around. Look, you, you lost a perfectly good deal. But no, that didn't happen. All of the trades are still on the table. And Donovan Mitchell is likely going to be the domino that needs to fall for Utah and for the Knicks. But that doesn't mean the Jazz, if the offer is right from the Lakers, won't make the deal because they still are rebuilding and they still probably are trading Donovan Mitchell at some point. Um, but realistically, the Jazz want to keep somewhat of a team around Mitchell until they move off of him, right? Because they don't want Mitchell and a bunch of like, you know, G League guys where Mitchell's kind of just wasting and just, you know, killing himself just to try to keep them somewhat relevant. So I think Utah does trade Mitchell at some point. And I think now that Kevin Durant has been locked up, this kind of puts teams in position to like, okay, let's go see if we what, what it would take to go get Mitchell. I think it allows teams to kind of pivot. And there could be other deals for the Lakers that now arise, right? If Mitchell goes to another team, maybe they need to clear some salary, right? Because the whole Westbrook thing is about clearing salary. It's what it would be for Utah. It's what it would be for uh, the Knicks um, and recouping assets. The, the Pacers, same thing. You get some first. You take on Westbrook, you're moving off of uh, the Buddy Heald deal, so you don't have to worry about that. Miles Turner, he's likely leaving, leaving you anyway, so might as well get some assets, stuff like that. So again, all of these deals are still there on the table for the Lakers. Literally nothing has changed. They're good. And worst case scenario, you keep Westbrook. I know many people don't want to keep Westbrook. I know many people don't want to see Westbrook on this roster, but I really think Darvin Ham. Could get the most out of Westbrook. Last year, 
Frank Vogel never put Westbrook in a position to be successful. And look, I'm not trying to take all blame away from Westbrook. He definitely deserves a chunk of the blame, but he wasn't the only problem. He was part of it, but he wasn't the only problem. And the whole point of getting Russell Westbrook was to alleviate LeBron James, yet they were almost always on the court together. And I'm not saying don't ever play them together, but what I'm saying is that like the whole point of you going out and getting Westbrook was when LeBron is either not in games or he just misses games entirely, you have Westbrook to kind of lead the, lead the charge and be the LeBron, you know, pseudo LeBron replacement and kind of carry the workload. They Frank Vogel should have operated Westbrook as a sort of sixth man. Start him for the egos so they feel good. Then you take LeBron out at like the five minute mark. You tell Russ, you got five minutes to yourself. Go take over this game. I think you would have been able to do it. Then you have Russ sit, you put LeBron in, and, and then you swap Anthony Davis and LeBron and then Anthony Davis and Westbrook. And you, you basically are interchanging Westbrook and LeBron the entire game. And if Westbrook is hot and he's on fire and he's playing great, close out the games with him. But if he's not, then you bench him. That's what they need to do. And that's what I think Darvin Ham will do. Westbrook doesn't need to be a 30-point triple-double a night guy. He just needs to be serviceable for these Lakers to be good and to be scary. And I really think Darvin Ham is going to be able to do that. Russ averaged 18-7-7 seven and seven last season, but it was extremely inefficient. Like, if you didn't actually see the games and you actually didn't see Westbrook last year, then you would think, like, Westbrook had an amazing year, right? He almost averaged a triple-double. You know, he was great for the Lakers. But in reality, if you watch the games and everything, it wasn't the case. If Russ could average what he averaged last year, but in an efficient manner, which Darvin Ham may be able to get from him, then that is an absolute home run for the Lakers. If you could get a guy that night in and night out can get you at least 18-7-7 when LeBron isn't in the game... That would be huge for the Lakers because now you legitimately have that third option. Uh, you have that big three that you hoped you would have, and it's a, it's a possibility. Plus, Anthony Davis, I think, is the big key, the big factor. But if you keep Russ, I really don't think it's the end of the world. I know a lot of people feel otherwise, and a lot of people want Russ just gone. But you keep your cap space for next season. You you can make a small deal with like THT maybe if you could trade like THT for like a Patrick Beverly or something like that and that way you clear his eleven million so now you got like thirty one plus million I'm not even saying to go get Kyrie obviously if you can get Kyrie great if you could swap Kyrie for Russ and not lose any of your assets that would be amazing and then you'd still have those assets maybe you can go do another deal maybe you could do another trade um, but even if it's not Kyrie you could use that money to maybe go sign. Uh, Miles Turner or go sign some other free agent or maybe sign a couple free agents something like that um, I just think the Lakers are still in a great position and I don't think they wasted their time because Kyrie is that great you wait around for Kyrie and nothing changed you know other than Kevin Durant staying in Brooklyn and Kyrie's likely staying too so you didn't lose anything the Pacers deal is still on the table the Jazz deal and Knicks deal is still in the same situation it is in all of the deals that have been rumored the last like two, three months are all still there. So I don't think it's a big deal. I think the Lakers are fine. But anyway, those are my thoughts and opinions. And as always, I pass the question on to you. Let me know yours down in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? How do you feel about the situation? I'd love to hear your thoughts. That being said, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me know you enjoy these types of videos and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button, follow by the bell notification, stay up to date with all things sports, join this wonderful community and all of our discussions. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.